welcome to episode 394 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I'm Ryan Walton, and as always, I'm joined by Dan Reamer. Hello. Hi. I told you when I was going to start the, the show, Uh huh. and then I forgot to pay attention to the time. I thought maybe. So I almost just missed the mark. I saw you not looking at what you were supposed to be looking at, just gazing off into space or whatever. So what I was doing, my Apple Watch, when you put it on, you have to either open your phone or unlock it, and I hadn't... I hadn't completed either task. Uh, uh, um, so I was clearing out my notifications on my watch because they clear out separately from my phone and then glanced up and realized I was a mere 30 seconds from the start. So I did a quick glance down to check that episode number and then just like a true professional, I just, I, I'm, I marched on. Right. The show must go on. Right. I get it. Yeah. It's bigger than just me. It is. It's, so I, yep. There's a whole world out there waiting on this. Yeah, I did what I needed to do, and I and I, I set, and I think I cranked out what's a what's a pretty consistent intro. Sure, that went it went well. Yeah, it went, it went fine. I would describe it as fine, which is what you're looking for out of an intro. Right, it served its purpose. Did what it's supposed to do. Yeah, introduce the show as well as the host. Right. What more do you need out of it? I mean, mm-hmm. doesn't need to be flashy or anything. Speaking of introductions, producer Gerald's here. He is. We have a full house, a threesome. All of us here. Yeah, I, it's not a threesome. That's a different. That's different. No, it's three. It's three. Three guys. In in my. That's okay. Yep. So. Okay. The band's all together this morning. It was a little different in my my mind, but sure. No, yeah, that's how I see it in my mind. I'll just tell you that. Fair enough. Fair enough. I've got a little rasp this morning in my voice. It's not the COVID nineteen. It's uh, the allergies. I'm not really picking up on too much of a rasp. It's there, so you might hear it cut out. It might sound like I'm going through puberty. Hmm. It's got. It's one of those situations where I need to clear my throat periodically, and that's not an appetizing sound to hear on, on a it's recording. Not, you're so. right. It's not an appetizing sound to hear, ever, honestly. But disagree. Live, it's good, but on the on a recording, it's bad. You don't nah. like hearing someone dislodge that. Uh, different strokes for different folks. I guess that phlegm um, from the back of their throat. No, no, I'm not. I'm not into it. It's not melodious to me. It's, but you enjoy it, so I mean. You know, to each their own. Um, I'm down. Slim is probably for sure a fetish of some of some folks. Oh, I'm sure everything's a fetish of some folks. Are Are you disappointed that three minutes in the word fetish has already been used? <laughs> no, um, no. At this point, I think it's kind of expected. So, threesome and fetish. Yeah, Gerald. Gerald pointed out that we're on a roll. Thank you, Gerald. Yes. Yeah, we're on a roll. Mm-hmm. I can't see now. He's got a little rasp in his voice too. Did you he catch does that? A, he does, but his he's doesn't sound his throat. His almost sounds more like a scratchy sore throat as opposed to phlegm, though. It's phlegm. Oh, he said it's phlegm. Okay, phlegm. That's phlegm has been confirmed. It doesn't sound very phlegmy. Phlegm is confirmed. Now I want to warn everybody that we're light on news this week. Hmm. And by light, I mean there's not much of it, and it's not good. <laughs> You're not going to take anything from today's episode. No. So just so just enjoy this part up front. I'm going to tell you now, enjoy the part up front, because I don't see it picking up pace. Yeah, this is as good as it gets right here. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to peak a little early on this episode, and I want you to be aware. Because yeah. some, some have... people may skip through the, the witty banner up front and go straight to the hard-hitting news that we just regurgitate from other outlets. Mm. They may skip right to that part. Don't. Uh, yeah, probably don't this week. I'll tell you that. Just take this there, all in and just, yeah, just go with it. There's a bunch of lists, and there's maybe half a story between the two stories we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah, it's basically just stuff to to fill to say that we're doing news, <laughs> right? To just not have to cancel the entire topic. <laughs> uh, that the whole scheduled news section, we cobbled some stuff together. <sighs> we did. So. <coughs> um, oh. We'll we'll talk about what we're playing in a second. The the NES Lego set came out. Mm-hmm. I ordered that. Producer Gerald ordered it. Um, you're going to hold off for right now. It's a little rich for my blood, and I, and I'm not as into it as you guys are. Um, you are obviously, you know, like the fact that so it's, it's the NES is, is it's huge rubbing me, it's rubbing you. me right in two places. Right. Right. Um, it's very nostalgic for me uh, as as the first system I remember really playing. Obviously, strong ties to my father because 
that was my babysitter when mm-hmm. I was growing up. Uh, him and I playing NES together was what we did. Um, and it's also fucking cool. It's a cool looking set. It is a cool looking set. I will say that. And producer Gerald, of course, which we talked about, he he collects the Lego sets, so of course he was going to get it. Uh, it's a little rich for my blood for what it is. Now, it's already out of stock. So it is already sorry, out of stock. Yeah. Sorry for bringing it up. Now, I thought I'll be honest with you. I thought it was still in stock. Um, but it's already out, so sorry for bringing it up if you didn't get one. But I'm excited about putting this together, which I know for some people, they bought it to resell. Mm-hmm. Uh, Producer Gerald was telling us before the show, they're already listed for and going for like absurd amounts already. Yes, they are. I bought this thing to put it together. Now, the reason I'm telling you that now is because if someone wanted to open up their checkbook and get ridiculous with me, I'll, I do only love it to a certain amount. Right. There, there's a price on your love. I love it, and I want to put it together, but if someone was to be like, I'll give you $500 for that, I'll be like, sure. Yeah, no, I get it. Oh, no, for sure. You can have that. That makes sense. Uh, because you obviously love it more than I love it. Uh, if 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 I don't get an offer, I won't be upset, though. Does that make sense? Yes. It makes like, sense. I want to have it. Um. But I, I plan to put this together. I plan to, to hurt everyone's feelings when I open that box and rip all the plastic baggies open and put it together. Yeah, people are going to be so mad at you for that. But, I mean, so once you spend it, it doesn't matter what you do with it. Once you spend yeah. that money. I worked for that money. That's I right. spent that money. And then I, I, do what, I do what I want with the item. That I purchased. Yep, I get it. Yep. So uh, that was a, a high point for this week. I, I briefly told you before the episode, I, I also got the... Uh, Echo frames, which are the 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 frames that have the uh, Alexa assistant built into them for glasses, mm-hmm. so that I can now have the Echo strapped to my face, which is the next step to becoming part cyborg <laughs> and totally intertwining with robots, becoming one with robots. Now, what there do you do? Are. You take those to your doctor and get your prescription glass you put in it. them. You take them. You take them to your uh, your eye doctor. Your op- opthro- optometrist, op- I can't say optometrist, that. Optometrist, yes. Optometrist, optom- th- 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 you take it to them with a with a instruction sheet that it comes with, which tells them about the process of installing uh, the lenses because you can't use heat the same way as you normally would. Right. Um, it comes with instructions, They and they do the whole thing. So you'll see there, they look thick when you're looking at them, but let's pull up that gentleman in frame number one. They look fine on. Yeah, I see that. They look, they look like thick boys when they're sitting there. Now, this is not a frame that I've ever worn. It's a thick black plastic frame. I've always wore a thin metal frame. Right. So it's a departure from my normal look. I do plan to get a pair of glasses that look similar to what I usually wear at the same time um, in case I just hate these or I hate the way they look. So now what do you, what is the point of these? What? Okay, so let do? me tell you the, the their point and then let me tell you my point. Okay. So their point is right there in that catchphrase. Never miss a moment with Alexa. Okay. So their idea is that you'll be everything, right? They're going to be there. Anytime you're like, hey, what's the score of the the Titans game? What's the uh, score of the Predators game? What's and then the your, weather? And then your glasses talk to you and tell you. They talk to you. Okay. You have Real talking time. glasses, essentially. Yes. Now okay. let me tell you my thought. There, there's a couple things. So okay. you can answer calls on them, which in case you don't already look like a psychopath with, with AirPods or earbuds in. You super look psycho when you don't even have anything in your ears and you're talking. Right, when you're having a conversation with your glasses. Yeah, I get it. But the reason I really wanted these is because the speakers are, are there's a better term for this. I'm not a speaker doctor, okay. but they're directional. And so they aim directly into your ear holes. Mm-hmm. So you can't hear and I can, which lets me listen to podcasts without anything in my ear that you can hear. Bose also makes... Uh, a pair of glasses that, that do the same thing, but I'm super jazzed up. So I'm, I can like sit next to you at a restaurant and be listening to a podcast that you can't hear without anything in my ear, which still lets me hear the world around me, but also lets me hear my thing without having to take something. Cause I love my AirPods, but every, every time some asshole walks in, I have to reach up and double tap or pull it out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and with these, um, I think I can still hear enough of the conversation and still hear the podcast and be okay. You have to let us know how that works. Yeah. So that works the way is that if it works as advertised. So I have used them 
obviously I can't see out of them, but I have used them uh, to listen to a a a podcast when laying in bed at night. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am super into this idea of having it without without uh, any kind of thing in my ear. Now, see again, they look like fat boys; they're thick. But when this guy right. puts them on, they look like regular glasses. Right. I do see that. But that's a good look for his face. I don't think my face shape is uh, conducive for these to look nice on me. I guess we'll see. I can't yeah, wait to so, see in them. Yeah. Also, I'll be able to just... Here's what... Here's what In my house, they're not super necessary, right? Because you can't go anywhere that the Echo's not already listening. Right. But, like, in my backyard or something, you know, as I'm walking up, giving directions to my house already sounds nice to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mostly I'm interested for the listening to podcasts easily without showing people. Because I think there's a certain, like, when you see somebody with earbuds in, you're like, this fucker's not paying attention. Right. Which is true. Which I'm okay uh, with. That's usually, if I have my ear, earbuds in, that's what I'm going for. I've, I've, I've put them in when they're dead before so people don't talk to me. <laughs> okay, I want to be clear on that. I'm not. That's not a move I don't like. But there are times where... You know, I have a job where I walk around and talk to people. It's rude for you to have earbuds in when you're doing that. So it keeps you from that. You can just pause your podcast on there, have on a conversation, and go right back to playing without putting anything on or you know. Because right now, it. I'll put my AirPods in, walk thirty steps, and then take them back out, which is super frustrating. But you know, it gets me ready. You know, I like to zone out. Um, I just, I just think that I'm excited about that part. But yeah, so. I've I've started integrating into the robot society. Yes, we we are, we were aware of this already, though. So well, now it's going to be on my face, right? So all the people who are like, I'm worried about listening to me all the time. I'm I'm inviting it into every second of my life. And ho- hopefully, these don't go the way of the with the echo look. Is that what well, it was? Maybe they do go that way because I got something free that was better. So these are working with your phone. It's a great question, Producer Gerald. They are working off of your phone. They work with Android and iOS. That is how they are connected. Uh, no need to touch your phone, but you can control certain things. I could start and stop a podcast through my phone or through my watch, or I can use uh, the Echo frames themselves to ask it to start the podcast. So lots of different you know options. You can say, you know, listen to the official Game Stitch podcast, and it'll start playing, or I can just pull my phone out which is how usually how i do it because i like to decide what i'm going to listen to yeah that's how i do it too um but yeah i'm just i'm a i'm 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 cautiously optimistic um about these i will say i have the echo in my car i have the garmin speak plus which is navigation as well as the virtual assistant um and a dash cam all built into one and the problem is when i'm in the car it sometimes hears a podcast say something that sounds sort of like its name. Oh. And it stops playing. And that pisses me off, so I think I can avoid that by using these. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Probably could. That's where I'm at. So, also, I got the day one editions, so they were way cheaper than when they come out. They're not actually out right now. Uh. uh I think I paid $170 for them. And I think they're two fifty when they come out. It, but it turns out when you when you buy literally every Echo device that they make, they like to ma- have you buy more. Well, yeah. There you go. They're one eighty. Um, what does it say? Does it say when they're? Does it say what they cost when they come out? Okay. I think maybe the email they sent me had because will be two fifty. Yep. Yeah, two fifty. So they're one eighty now, and they'll be two fifty. You can request an invitation. Um, I got my invitation for those in the loop. The Echo Loop is actually a ring that you wear. Yes, I've heard about the Echo Loop. Yeah, so I got an invitation to both of those. I'm gonna pass on the Loop though, because um, I don't wear a ring of any kind, and the glasses I have to wear, or I will be murdered because I will get killed in traffic, or walking, or um, eating, any activity that requires you see. So, there's a loop. Kind of a thick boy also. Yeah, not into the loop. It's kind of a bigger ring. That would drive me nuts. So. Yeah, well, also, one, I have one ring that's one ring to, too many. You have to hold it up to your face to talk? That guy had it, like, up on his face. The guy on the second. That guy? 
You're not allowed to touch your face. Yeah, first off, yeah, he's he's very da- he's in dangerous of breaking COVID protocol, but he's very see like her, she's doing like the secret service thing. Oh yeah. Which is unnecessary because it's a fucking ring. You don't need to touch your ear. Does it have a speaker? Where does it speak to you from? Hmm. I don't know much about the loop, but the the glasses again, you don't have to be weird because it's strapped to your face, so you don't have to look look at your dick and be like, "What time is it?" <laughs> you know, like, it's it's on your my, face, you know. My dick always knows what time it is. So. You can look at your dick and ask it what time it is, but you don't have to. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, it's a thick ring. That guy has it on what I can assume is next to a wedding band. Yeah, and it's easily three times thicker and twice as tall. Yeah, it's a lot wider. It looks like a, almost like a wrap you'd put on your finger if your finger was busted. Like when you played sports. Yeah, it's unnecessary. It's, it's probably not tungsten either. It would weigh like 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, know. I'm not into that. I don't know if I'm into the glasses either, to be honest with you. But Oh yeah, he's holding up to his ear to hear. Yeah, he's talking into it. He's oh, talking this is right it. into it. And no one's looking at him funny. Yeah, he's doing that thing where he's like, ring, what time is it? And he's shoving it in his ear. Yeah, that's, that's a big fat pass. That's definitely going the way they look. You buy one of those, you'll be able to get an Echo Show out of it. <laughs> You'll be able to get an Echo Show one day. I don't think I yeah, told so, the listeners. I finally got mine. Yeah. And and then you sent me the most important text anyone could ever send anybody about which smart was, home stuff. Which was what? Oh. Can I use the Google Assistant and Echo at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, like, with my lights, can I hook them both up so that I can, you know, if I'm in a room with the show, I can make them work. Or turn off, even though they're already hooked up to my Google Assistant. Right, and I hit you with the yes, you the can. yes, absolutely, because I'm also a psychopath and have them hooked up in the same room. So the the Google Home that I have is pretty much a front door monitor. That's right, pretty much all it does. What I'm thinking about doing is I have Google Home here mm-hmm. in this room, um, the Mini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about taking that, putting that in the garage, because mm-hmm. I need one in my garage for some reason. Um, I get it. I'm thinking about it too. <laughs> and and moving the show in here, and then I can control everything from in here. Yeah, I'm interested to see what you think. Now you you've you've come up on Google. I'm interested to see what you think when you have them both hooked up because I think they're they're both about the same. I think they're both really good. I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with this with the show because I don't really have, like, the kitchen is really the only place I need, you know, video, video, right? Um, and that's I already have my my Google Home in there, my Google Home Hub. Um, so I'm still in the process of trying to figure out where to put the uh, the the show. For those that are new. D- Dan's not an asshole that just spends money to spend money. He bought an Echo Look a long time ago. They discontinued those, and as a replacement, they sent out shows. Yes. I think that's show five. The show five, it yeah. Was. So if you're sitting around going, why did he buy something he doesn't need? Cause that's, he did, but a long time ago. That's what I do. Right. Um, and this was replacement for that. Um, pretty much everything I buy, I don't need. Yeah, so because my whole house was set up with Echo... And I got, I purchased my Google Home, Mm -hmm. but I purchased it for, uh, so first off, I have the homes, the small ones. They're Google Homes, right? The minis, yeah. The circle ones? Yeah, I have two two or three of those that have come with other smart home things I've purchased. Yeah. They're not in use right now. I have the Home Hub, which is the smaller screened one. Okay, yeah. And I purchased that. I got a good deal on it. I had Kohl's Cash. Yep, I remember. Plus, you it was me on sale, that. so I paid virtually nothing for it. Um, but I have it. So when you walk in my home, I have, I think what's called a console table. It's like a skinny table in my entryway. Mm-hmm. It goes against the wall. On that, I have my my Nest alarm, my Nest Aware, I think it's called, or Nest Guard. Then I have my my Google Wi-Fi, and then in the middle of that, I have my my Nest Hub. So it's my little, it's my Google table. Mm-hmm. 
and it's 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 you can you can see it from my living room. You know, it's it's easy just to turn and look at it. So that is basically most of the time I keep my front door actually pulled up on that with the volume down. So anytime I can just look over and get a live feed of my front door. Right. If anyone rings my doorbell, it automatically pops up on that camera so that I'm trained now that when the doorbell goes off, I just glance up there and see who it is. Right. Um, so that is basically part of my security the way I look at it. As it's over there with my actual security system. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that you shouldn't use Google and Echo and other smart things all together. But I already fucked that up. So Right, see that's a problem is I was I was looking at sticking with you know all Google with the exception of the Hue stuff, um, which works with Google. Right. But now I got a free Echo show. I mean yeah. come on. I, I don't think that's a problem. I don't suggest having if I could tell someone to do it over again, I would not tell people to buy the Nest uh cameras. Which is don't, what I have. Don't buy them. No, they're they're just they're way too expensive for what they are. They're they're great. I think they're the best cameras you can buy, but they're way overpriced. There's so many good ish, good alternatives that aren't super expensive. Right. Like I think I saw like one security camera that uh, worked with Google Assistant and Alexa was like fifty bucks. Yeah, I think you can buy the the uh, the Echo Cam is like I think like forty bucks or the whatever they call yeah. it. It's like forty forty or fifty dollars. Blinks are pretty cheap. Yeah, those Arlos go on sale all the time. Uh-huh. Um, they're all really good. There, there's no reason to pay for Nest. It's just I already had a drop cam, which I got as a gift, which was then purchased by Nest, which has become Google Home now, I think is what they call it, uh, or Nest Home or something like that. Uh, Nest by Google or something. It has some dumb name now. But... <laughs> already had that so the second camera I didn't want to use another app to control another camera so I've just stuck with it and then in order for everything else to work together I, I was stuck to get so I got I would have probably got the Echo B thermostat but instead I got the the Nest thermostat because I wanted it to work with your Google stuff my other stuff right yeah. so see that then that was something else I was thinking about doing now that I got this show as I was thinking about just getting like cheap cameras or something yeah. that, that work with, work with Alexa mm-hmm. and uh, just using that as like a security system type thing. Yeah. So to, I have just to see, action. you know, put them at all the doors. I have, you know, I have four doors. Yeah. Well, five actually one, two, three. Yeah. My cameras are pointed at my doors. That's what they do. They're for security. I do have the security system. I, I don't, again, you should buy simply safe. Uh, it's very cheap. It's very affordable. Their monitoring is pretty cheap. If you're going to have someone monitor it, if not, they'll still send you stuff without monitoring. I'm pretty positive. Um, you should not buy. You should not buy the Nest Guard. It's too expensive again. But I got it for half price. Right. That's the only reason I bought it. Uh, I paid full price for the thermostat, though. I did not get a deal on that. Yeah, uh, thermostats I can't use. Um, I've got geothermal. Yeah. Heating and cooling, and that's number one. I don't know how they work with geothermal. I I, I want to say the Nest one does work with it, but I don't know because it's got a, a fucking forty five thousand options on setups. But on the, I also I haven't adjusted my thermostat in four years. Right. Well, I'll so, tell you what it does is it adjusts itself and it'll piss you off. Click on that uh, second row all the way to the end, minus one, where it has all the shit laid out. Uh, not that one, the one above that one. That one. So this is like the the Nest Guard. This is the security system. This thing is like 300 and some odd dollars. Hmm. And that's all it gets you, which is your What's pin that keypad. That is, that's your brain. That is the brain. That's how you unlock your house when you come in. You can push your your pin pad. You can push the number in, or you can take one of those key fob, which are the black and blue things. You just wave it above it and it unlocks your house. Well, see, my wife has already decided that we are not doing smart uh, stuff to on the doors themselves. I tried that already. We had to okay. So them. the only thing that goes on the doors are those little uh, the dick shaped and the small dick shape. Those uh-huh. go on the doors. 
Um, those are open close sensors as all those are. Okay. Uh, the other stuff is mounting hardware. So really you get two door window sensors, which are multi-purpose. They do a bunch with, with, they actually tell you the temperature and other things. And then you get the keypad and you get two fobs. So the fobs just keep you from typing in your pin number. You just walk in, wave it over that and it dis, it disarms your security system. Okay. Um, and so the way I said it is, Hey, if, if the door was to open right now or a window was to open, go off. I don't have it set to motion because my cameras are already set to let me know about motion during certain hours. Right. So because I have dogs, my they would go, would go off all the time if I set it to motion. But yeah. I can draw zones and, you know, I've got it to where it doesn't detect my dogs much anymore unless they're acting, acting a fool. Um, so I'm able to monitor my own security quicker than I think any company could. Um, I know pretty much immediately if something is going to ride home. Everything sends me alerts in real time. So same thing for my therm. My uh, I also use the the Nest um, Aware. I think maybe that's maybe that's what the CO two and smoke detector is called. I use it because it will automatically turn my thermostat off. Right. If there's a fire, so it doesn't pump smoke everywhere. Uh, but again, I got I got those on the cheap as well. I have three of those. Yeah, I'm just looking at getting just some cameras that can that I can check video on. Um, yeah, I mean there there's lots of affordable options for yeah. ones that work with the Google Assistant. That's really all I'm looking to do. What I will say though is is figure out the brand and stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but that's like I tried to. We had to. My wife wanted to replace doorknobs and lock on one of our doors, and I tried to talk her into smart, and she wasn't going for it. So I know that's the, not an option. So what's the concern there? If you want to go into it, if you don't want to spread your business on the internet, you can just say it just doesn't want it. But if you want to. Uh, the concern, there's uh-huh. not well, a concern. Cons- it's just, it's too much money for a fucking doorknob. Is okay. So she doesn't, about it's what not it, like she's worried about the security of it or the failure of no, it. She's, no, no. She just overpriced. doesn't want to spend that kind of money. Cause I don't need a fucking, you don't need a, <laughs> in her words, you don't need a fucking smart doorknob. Uh, that's basically, <laughs> she's probably, she's not wrong. <laughs> that's basically her take. On but it. you don't need any of this stuff. It's a bit like 80 bucks more, you know? Yeah. For that. I mean, but she wanted the one with security with the pin pad and stuff, so we have that. So here's where I was. I'm a little bit of an asshole with the, with the, the door lock situation because I didn't want anything to alter the front of my door. Right. I didn't want you to know by looking at it that I had a smart door lock. hmm So that obviously limits the options I have. Right. Which is ultimately good got a screaming deal on it but i use august because it didn't august doesn't require you to work to alter the outside and it still works as a normal deadbolt from the outside Mm. you put a key in it you turn it just like normal the difference is that it also locks and unlocks when i come home or when i leave automatically Um, it's set as part of my routines at night when i you know do one thing it'll automatically lock my front door the echo will say hey by the way your front door is not locked. Do you want me to do that for you too? If I do something else I normally do at night, it'll prompt me even to lock the door. I love nice. that. It's like yeah. it learned me. That's um, nice. Yeah, so it's not necessary, um, but none of this shit is. Um, so th- also got a text. Friend of the show, Matt, texted me this week. Oh. With a text that you'll be proud of. Oh, no. But... I don't know if you've ever spent any time talking to him about smart home stuff. Not super interested, though. No, I haven't. Okay, well, he's not super interested. So I'm 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 doing my thing, right? 8.25 in the morning on Wednesday. Okay. I get a text that says, I need a good recommendation for some smart bulbs. Ooh. I waste what? no time. I call him. Yeah. What'd you tell him? Oh, uh, we we went we went all the way down the rabbit hole. He got so much okay. more information than he ever needed or wanted. Okay. I, I, I basically laid out a roadmap to go every direction you can go over like a 45-minute call that I guarantee you he regretted all of. So... See the bulbs I've had the best luck with, honestly. Not that the, not that I don't like the hues. Hue but again, the, overpriced for a bulb, right? But for the price, uh, the uh, uh, why can't it? Wemo is it? Yeah, Wemo's Wemo's a thing. Wemo, I think they're Wemo bulbs that I have. I have a Wemo smart plugs. Um, I had a single problem out of them in the the whole time that I've had them. So he had some pretty de- defined needs that he wanted out of these lights. I think ultimately uh, where he landed was the TP-Link bulbs. 
Mm. Uh, oh wait, maybe that's what I have. Yeah, TP Link is is pretty good. I have their smart plugs. I have the T. I have the Wemo smart plugs. I have the TP Link bulbs in my bedroom. The Casa bulbs, I think they're called, with a K. Casa with a K. Yep. Yeah, and K-A-S-A. I have the I have the GE ones in my room, and they're all right. But so he was he was asking about the GE. He asked about the uh, Philips Hue. Obviously, we talked the pros and cons of those. I talk. I think it's like Singland or something like that. Singland, Singland. They yep. make a, a relatively affordable smart bulb. Um, we talked basically everything and I went through pros and cons and different, but the reason I think I said, Hey, TP link makes a lot of sense because they're affordable. Mm -hmm. They don't require a hub. Right. And they do have other smart home stuff in case down the line, you wanted to say, let's put a smart plug in here. That's, I would have had to double check and see what I have in my bat in my bedroom. I'm pretty sure it's TP link, but for just bulbs, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. So there's a lot of, again, when you're talking about the the pinnacle of like smart bulbs for consumer, so I know that they make crazy like commercial applications and high end mm-hmm. smart home stuff. But if you're talking about go to the store, pick up a smart bulb, Philips Hue, I, I truly believe in my balls, is the best product you can get. The it's same overpriced. way I feel about same way I feel about all the Nest products. It is by far the best and by far the most overpriced. Yeah. Um. So I don't suggest going with Hue unless you already have Hue stuff. Uh, their white bulb is pretty affordable. If you have an Echo version two, or the, I think the the Home Hub, um, you don't need a a hub for them. A bridge, a bridge, yeah, the the Hue Bridge they call it. Yes, uh, but I don't suggest going with that. It's it's a very expen they're expensive. Look at their light strip prices. If you want to see if you should go with Philips Hue, look how much they charge for a fucking light strip. <laughs> right. It's you know what's $80. nice about the bridges though is the bridge allows you to pretty much connect as many bulbs as you ever want to. And you can control them from anywhere. Yeah. Um, I just got the floodlights in and got my routine set up and all that. So, how much is that light strip? Is that the starter kit or is that the regular? Eighty dollars. Eighty bucks for the Bluetooth light strip. It is. It's so expensive. They, yeah, the only also, reason that's the only like reason six foot I, long. Yeah, the only reason I have Hue is because I ran into those couple of really good deals. I'm glad that you have Hugh, but um, it, yep. it's what I was leading up to say that I totally lost my mind because Joe pulled up pictures of fun stuff. <laughs> um, it, r- rarely should you buy the most expensive brand with smart home stuff. Right. Rarely. Because it's overpriced. It's it is, good, there are but it's overpriced. Yeah, there are all, 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 alternatives that are almost as good, if not as good, um, for way less money. Oh, yeah. No so. Doubt. Um, I don't, I, again, I, I think shop around and then figure out what your needs are. I mean, Matt and I were able to go through the whole gambit because I would ask him more questions. Like, how do you want to use it? What do you want to be did, able to do here? Do you what have did he to have decide on? TP link? That TP link, I think is where he stands. I don't think he's committed a hundred percent to doing it, but I think he's close. Um, and the TP link made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons because he, he doesn't need color. Right. He wants a white, he wants to dim between, you know, a soft white and a bright white. Mm-hmm. And, um, he wants to be able to control it with his phone or with his voice. Um, so he needs something that works with his echoes. Um, and he doesn't want to feel like he didn't want to jump into the, like the Jetsons house. He wants to be able to just put a smart bulb up. Right. Um, and so I think, I wish I'd recorded the conversation cause you'll hear me reference like 20 times how he could just add the smart plugs down the road though. <laughs> He was like, no, I got you. I think we're going to do the bulbs probably. I'm like, yeah, I need those because it's all the same app. You could just start slinging those plugs in. You just bring those plugs right on in. Yeah, the, pl- the plugs are nice. Because what I want is for everyone to be all smart. <laughs> because it, it uh, I like to talk about it, number one. Number two, it means more products, you know. Plus, like when I got the GE, I got, uh, I got four GE bulbs and a smart plug. And it was, I don't know where I found the deal, but it was like 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. Was now, do like, the GE require a hub? They do not require a hub. Okay. Um, but they they don't work the way I would like them to. Uh, and I say they don't require a hub. I think they do require the smart plug that comes with them. Okay. I think that's got like the hub in built into it. For and for those that don't. When we say hub, it's like a device that controls the lights. Yes. It's not a like a Google hub. I know that's probably right. confusing because right. if you're not in the – you came here to talk about video games. 
So essentially, I think you you plug it. If I remember correctly, because I've had it's, it's been so long, I'm pretty sure you plug the smart plug in, and then put your bulbs in, and your bulbs have to connect by Bluetooth to the smart hub, smart plug to. So work. they're being sneaky about how the hub's working. They're using which, it as a smart plug. Yeah, which isn't a bad idea. I mean, it's smart. a good idea. Smart, but, yeah. But I don't like the way the. They don't work very well, like in unison, and they work very choppy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, here, are you paying attention? Pay attention to the light, listeners. This isn't for you. <laughs> but yeah, just pay attention to my light here. Okay. Uh, hey Google, turn the lights all the way up. See how they're like oh, choppy that's like bizarre. that? That's bizarre. Because you can't see it because we're not a video podcast. Uh, right. It looked like. A disco for a second. Yeah, because all none of the, they don't all the lights don't like dim up on unis in unison. Oh, they yeah. like they like chop up together, but there's four lights and they're all doing it on a different. Yeah, it was it was like flashing like right. seizure time. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. Look, it, it it and I can't explain how brief that was. It is like a, it is like the that in the time that it did it, but it, right. it's annoying but it's that it's not smoother. And my bedroom doesn't work like that. My bedroom is like a nice, all the lights work oh, together, yeah. and they all dim up, and they all dim down. I have, I think I've talked about it, but in my bathroom I have two lights, so my top light is a Hue uh, Color Plus bulb. Okay. Uh, and I can be in my shower, I have an Echo in my bathroom, because that's what one does. And... I have from a Google sh- Mini in my bathroom. It's yeah, fine. from my shower, I'm like, hey, make the lights blue. Make them red. Like, and I don't turn the other light on, so my whole bathroom is that color while I'm showering. And I just fit it to my mood. And uh, I'm telling you, there's something to it. There's fucking something to it. The only it's thing a- I have to be careful of is I can't take a long shower because I have my uh, my sensor and my lights are set at... Uh, if they don't, if it doesn't read motion, they, they turn off after 10 minutes. Hmm. And it can't see you in the shower. Right. That's an issue. So uh, during the day. Well, no, because I get a, I get, I get like a two minute, I have like a two minute dim period. So after 10 minutes, they go, they go dim for about two minutes, which gives me enough time to go, okay, my shower's over, turn off the water. And then as soon as I open the shower curtain and step out, they come back on. Yeah. So the way that my motion works during I've got it really refined to like during certain hours to really focus on. So like when I'm taking a shower, it's not, the motion's not an issue for me because it's going to stay on for 30 minutes. Mm. Um, but at night I have it on a much stricter time. If it doesn't see motion, I think in two minutes it shuts off. Yes. I have my, that's how I have mine set at night too. Yeah. And it also dims to a nightlight at night too. So does mine. It, yeah. it, it won't turn on all the way. And it, and it and it's always just white at night too, so it's that really soft white. Yeah. But and but when I'm in the mine shower, only turns on to like twenty percent. There's something to it. There's something to being like make it green. And I just get in a fuck, fucking green jungle and I just take a shower. See, uh, if I had my way, I would make every single light in my house a smart light. But yeah, but you don't live alone, right? <laughs> and uh, that's super unnecessary too. As somebody who also has the same dream, that's incredibly <laughs> unnecessary. Uh, I was in my garage replacing a bulb. I'm like, I should put a uh, probably put a hue out here. And I'm like, what? That makes zero sense to put a hue in my garage. Right. But I'm pretty close to thinking that's what I'm going to do. That's see, like, here's there's a fancy shower that I don't I have. Do like those that. rain showers. But you see, I get that same vibe. Like my bathroom looks like that without being fancy. Right. Because that color just radiates the whole shower. I have a tiled-in shower with a glass door, and my bathroom is small. And so the whole room becomes that color, but it's not bright. It's still kind of dim because it's just one overhead color light. Right. So it's like a dark, but it's still like all red. Like your skin doesn't even look the same. There's just something about it. I highly suggest everybody turn their home into a smart home today. Because we've only been talking about it for an hour now. And start big. Start all the way. I mean, just spend (laughs) everything you have. Just go all in. Uh, If you don't take anything else from the conversation, they buy Nest and buy Hue. Just spend everything that you have. Wow. Fuck rent. Fuck the car note. <laughs> just right just right in. So uh we will talk about video games now. You're welcome. 
Oh my god. We're just trying to yeah. get out the people who don't actually care. That's how you do it. You put a buffer in. <laughs> Those are the people who don't like us. So now yeah. no one's listening. So I'll, I'm going to start. I'm going to say what I have to say. Then I have a bone to pick with you. And yeah, then we'll I talk about f- the news. I made a bright in here. Holy shit. It is bright. Um, hey, Google. Turn the lights down to 20%. I, f- I look brighter because of you. And also anyone who has a smart home, he just fucked up their lights. There we go. You can't say Fine. stuff like that on a recording. I just did. Do I look brighter? I look brighter because you're brighter. I'm darker now. Yeah. On the camera feed that Gerald pulls up, it also guards half your face all the time. Like you like you are only uh, half a face all the time. I know. I love but it. But not now. Now I see it all. But earlier you were half a face when he scrunches it down even more. No, it's like it cuts you right in half. No, not that way. <laughs> Hot dog, not hamburger. It cuts you down the center. Um. So I, I I completed The Last of Us. Nice. I, I completed The Last of Us yesterday. I didn't text or tell anyone because I needed some time alone with my thoughts to decide how I felt about that game. And I don't I don't I'm still not even sure. Um, and I, and I don't mean from a story standpoint. I think the story is pretty cut and dry uh, for what it is. I think I think you you that story lets you know how you're supposed to feel. I think. Um, yep. Where I was torn is my journey through that game. Uh, it's, you know, it's well documented that I didn't finish the first Last of Us. I hated the gameplay. The accessibility stuff made it much easier for me to get into this game. Um, so I just need to think about how I felt about the 30 hours I spent with this game. It took me 29 hours and uh, I think 40 or 50 minutes to beat it. So right at 30 hours to beat it. And so you and I talked for the first time before we recorded uh, minus producer Gerald, who's about to play it, about our thoughts, uh, mm-hmm. some key story elements. We're not going to go into those here. Maybe we'll do something in the future. Maybe we won't. But right now, we're not going to go into it. But uh, I did complete it. So for everybody concerned that I would never complete it, I will tell you that I got concerned for a couple days that I would never complete it because I didn't have the urge to play it. But then I played it and immediately got, got the urge to continue to play it and mm-hmm. then got to a that's point good. where I was like, got to play it. Yeah, that's good. That's... Um, so... Now, I played that. I also have started Farming Simulator 19. Mm-hmm. You and uh, Marshall, friend of the show, Marshall 205. Friend of the show, Marshall. So the other night, I was like, hey, let's. Wreckfest has daily. So we jump in, we do the dailies. I'm like, let's play Rocket League. We, we jump in Rocket League. It's as if we've never played Rocket League ever. Really? Like our first time. Wow. And I said, hey, let's not do this because I still want to be friends after this. <laughs> so, and we were both playing terrible. Like okay. as bad as I've ever seen both of us play. <laughs> so then we do that thing where we're like, what do you want to play? And I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to play? It's it's about 1030. He goes, let's pay farming simulator. It's not the first time he said this, but it's always what I think is too late to start farming simulator because I'm going to have to roll a clinic out for him. He's never played one. The game's way too complicated. Right. But that night, because I don't know what other options we have. I'm like, okay, let's play farming. Okay. Simulator. Fuck it. Let's get this out of the way. Because you're going to hate it. We jump in. He fucking loves it. Really? Now, we've we've farmed three nights consecutively now. And we actually played yesterday during the day some as well. Wow. We have a, a farm going together. Um, we're making the decisions together. We're only playing it together. We're talking out like, I'll tell you, it's tough. Because you know how I feel about control in those kind of games. Yes, I do. So we're like back and forth on what tractor we should buy or what land we should purchase or what we should do or what we should be growing. He's got a different vision already than I do, right? He wants to go ahead and buy, like, a, a really nice tractor so we have one. I'm like, what we have is fine. Right. So you're, you're like, being business partners here. It's just like running an actual farm together. <laughs> exactly like running a real farm. Um, we're taking some contract work just to get the money up. <clears throat> we have uh, – this game gives you the ability to, like, make a field. So we bought some land, but we also connected the field so we have a bigger plot. Mm. I mean, we got – we just – we bought a pole barn to keep our equipment out of the, the muck. We have uh, a combine. We have two tractors. Uh, we have a plow. We have a cedar. We have just enough to have a basic operation going. The Nothing cool thing is that. when you take on the, the contract work, so someone can say, hey, I need this field uh, fertilized. Through the contract, I have the option to lease the equipment. You can lease equipment at home too, but I'll lease the equipment just for the contract, just for the job. So I can still make money without having any money to buy all those expensive things to do the thing. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty neat. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm super enjoying that. It's, it's definitely got me back in love with farming simulator because I dipped out for a while. Um, and then still playing rec fest, like I said earlier, and that's pretty much it. Now the bone I have to pick is with you because you have a bone to pick with me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. A person's allowed to change his mind, man. It's, it's, it's how assertive you were with your no. It's not that you're like, eh, I don't know yet. It's you were 1000% not for me. Those were, you guys can rewind to a previous episode. Where Dan says, Ghost of Tsushima is not for me. Hates the combat idea, the switch in between it, doesn't, it's not, not interested in it. Uh-huh. So to my surprise, I see Dan jump online, and I'm playing The Last of Us, and I'm like, I, I take a break, because sometimes I get overwhelmed with the idea of what the combat might be, even though it's not at all on baby mode ever a problem. Right. I took a break, I went and got some water, and I'm like, let me see what Dan's playing. And there he is, playing Ghost of Tsushima, <laughs> like he'd always planned to buy it. <laughs> and I was like, "What in the actual fuck is happening right now?" It was it was spur it was a little spur of the moment. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but um, you're right. I was pretty adamant about it. Everything I'd heard about it, I'm like, you know what? This isn't my kind of game. I don't like switching styles. Um, but I'm a huge fan of feudal Japan and. Um, you know, the, the samurai, the ninja, the, all that. I'm a huge fan of that. I, I you know, I like the, I'm a Kurosawa fan. I, I, I own all, most, almost all his movies. Um, so I'm like, all right, I, I've been paying attention to it. And I'm like, how do I, how do I reconcile the fact that I don't think I'm going to like the gameplay to the fact that I love like everything else about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just pay some attention to it, some real attention. So I've I've been reading uh, stories about what people have to say about it, and um, no spoilers like that or anything, but just the gameplay, some just the the gameplay and and you know some minor details of the story and how it works, how, combat. And as I'm getting more and more into it, I'm like, you know what? This this maybe this isn't so bad. Maybe maybe this is something I should give a try. So I pay some more attention, I pay some more attention, some more stuff. And the more they're talking about it, the more I'm like, you know what? I think I was wrong. I think I will enjoy this. Maybe I'll try it. A um, couple days go by, and still doing the same thing. And it's like, yep, okay, gonna try it. Boom, done, purchased, played. So that's how that went. I like how Dan says I'm going to try it. He bought the deluxe edition. I did buy it. Well, it was 10 bucks more. And I'm going to get... try it. By try it, I mean I'm going to go all in. <laughs> I didn't get the collector's edition. It's just, it was 10 bucks more, and you get like a horse and some clothes and stuff. I'm a sucker for that stuff. So all the way leading up to this, I've, I've said repeatedly I want to play this game. Mm-hmm. Um, friend of the show, Matt's playing it, so I called him, and I had the same conversation you're talking about. I said, hey, don't tell me about the game, but tell me about the game. What am I doing? What am I going to like? What am I not going to like? Um, and he says all good stuff, you know. He says some stuff that I think is really neat. Some stuff I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. But here's the problem I'm having. I've almost reversed. We've almost flip-flopped. We've almost pulled an Xbox, mm-hmm. you and I. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to get something. Um, I think that I want to see if I can guess what the problem okay. might be. Let's see. Okay, I'm ready. Um, after talking to Matt... Friend of the show, Matt. I'm okay, so I'll, sure. I, if you want to if you want to recalibrate your guess, I'll tell you it has nothing to do with Matt. No, no, no. I know um, it wasn't based on that conversation. Oh, I'm pretty sure that it's based on stealth. No, it's not no. my problem. Oh, my problem because the way I understand it, based off of what I've read, what I've heard in the conversations, you don't have to play stealthy. You can just balls to the wall all that entire. Yes, game it's, it's, it's it's. I can already tell you. Well, never mind. Go ahead. It's it's I'm made to be played you. either way. It is made to be played either way, yes. So that's not an issue. Here's the problem I have. Okay. It's a fucking miracle that I was able to give 30 hours to complete The Last of Us. Oh, you're worried about the length of it? The idea that my the, the next thing I do is to play another 30-hour game, I don't think that there is a chance in hell I ever finish it. Well, and, and here's... I kind of agree with you on that, that this might not be for you. and But there's also another reason why. Um it won't be a 30 hour game for you. 
Yeah, I hear people talking about forty and fifty hours and not the finished. last. Uh, the Last of Us Two was was, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a very linear experience. Yeah, I checked every um, nook and cranny of that linear experience, but yeah, right. This is not. This is very. Um, uh, Ubisoft, uh, Rockstar, uh, as you're riding around, you open up parts of the map and there's different stuff to go see. It's not a linear experience. Right. You will not finish this in 30 hours. So the the idea of going from something, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I finished a 30-hour game. And yes, I know I played Rocket League for 9 billion hours yes, and I'll yesterday. play Farming Simulator for 300. I don't play story games that take me 30 hours. I don't yesterday. ever find the time. Yesterday. That's right. the last time. Before that. <laughs> so the idea that I'm going to do it again in the same... Like month? Month, in the same quarter is... It, it's it's I know me better than that, I guess is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, I don't think you will. I, I think there's too much... It I took think, me over a month to beat The Last of Us. Yeah, and I think that the fact that it was a very linear experience helped you to finish that. Um, there's no that you know you have the attention span of a gnat. Um, yeah, it, it just you see a question mark pop up on the map, you're going to go see what it is. And yeah, you do that, and two more question marks pop up, and oh wait, look, there's fireflies. Wait, there's a fox over there. Hey, this bird. It, yeah. yeah, I never so, get anything done like that. But right. I will say. There was there was a lot of emotions with the last of us. Part of it was I was interested in where the story was going. The game was accessible enough I could play it. There were some some moments of just sheer determination, and that I was going to fucking finish this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of those moments happened too. I think the game is very long, um, so there were moments where I I willed myself to the next part till I got into it again. Um, I don't think I have it in me to do that again right now. I can't will myself to keep playing something again right now. I, I literally finished The Last of Us yesterday at like 6 o'clock. Right. Like, I don't think I have the... Because my plan was, as soon as I finished it, was to go buy Ghost of Tsushima and play it immediately. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I can. I don't I don't think... I think I used up what I have for that right now. That makes sense. Now, when this game drops to 30 bucks and I'm at a different place a few months down the road, maybe it makes Y'all sense. Yeah. Maybe. Not, I don't know. No. I don't know. Yeah, but I right changed now, my mind on it, and I'm really liking it so far. But right now, I'm thinking, should I just play Paper Mario instead on the Switch as a good cleanser, something different? Am I going to put the time into that? Should I just get Ghost of Tsushima and see what I think? Like, I'm so many different places, and then we started playing Farming Simulator. I'm like, I could just play this forever. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think right now, I think that this is going to go backwards of how everyone thought it was going to go, and I think you got it, and I probably won't. So, That's what we do? That's what we're playing and not playing. Sometimes. Right. Now, I'm excited. I'm Producer Gerald's going to play The Last of Us mm. Part 2. I'm excited to see how he feels about it. Yeah. So it'll be It'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting. That's a good word for it. If you want to support us, head over to patreon.com forward slash game stitch and do so. If you don't have any money, times are tough. You just don't want to support us. Whatever it is, you don't have to. But if you want to, patreon.com forward slash game stitch. And, uh, you know, if, if you're flat broke, you can just tell people about the show. You can just say, hey, check out the show. Now, Dan didn't want to hear this uh, commercial part so much. He just left. Gerald, you haven't said anything in 45 minutes. Where do you think he went? Bathroom? So you think maybe uh, alerted to action in his house and he's going to check it out. So the reason I think it's a bathroom is because usually he'll say, or maybe water, it could be like fluids. Fluids either in or out, I think. Because normally he'll say like, hey, the dog's barking, I'll be right back. Or someone's at my door, I'll be right back. He gave us no alert. He just got up and left. I think the urge hit him to either intake or, or outtake fluids. And he just left. I don't know if we're doing the show without him. It was false alarm. Does he have water? Did you go pee or did you go get water? I peed. See? We we talked about what it might might have happened. 
Because you, because he thought maybe uh, there was an alert, like you were alerted to something going on in your home, the dog bark and something like that. But I said he always tells us when that happens. Yeah, yeah. No, I just got up to. Uh, I've I've been up pretty early this morning and have um, had drinks. Okay. Have you now? We don't have time for a long conversation. Have you been out in the boat yet? Yes. Okay. How was it? Different. A good different. It takes some getting used to. Because it's so big. Uh, well, and you out and you go out in the water and you can see the land on one side and nothing on the other side, on the other three sides. And you're like, oh shit, uh, this is oh, real. Is it a little overwhelming? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. If you've never done it, I mean, I've, you know, when I was in the military, it was different because I'm not in charge of anything. Right. You just go. <laughs> <laughs> right. So with this, like it, you could really fuck everyone's life up. Like, yeah, well, all I need to, all I could think is because sometimes um, when I went out, I didn't have a super understanding of everything, you know, I'm getting better now. I'm learning the boat a little bit more, but I took it out and didn't know when we got out there and I'm like, fuck, what happens if like the Can engine stops? I get you us know? back. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if the engine stops? Do you say it out loud or do you keep what, it to yourself? What? No, it stays in my head. Okay. But so, yeah, that's a real concern, um, but no, it's, it, it's going to be okay. Good. Good. We've just gone down to it and played with, you know, fired it up and check spark plugs and probably done a bunch of the stuff we should have done before we bought it. But yeah, um, maybe like take it to the shop, just get everything checked out, make sure it's but not the engine. Seat. I mean, the, the engine runs yeah. fine. It's just being careful, making sure that, you know, stuff yeah. doesn't go wrong when you're out there. Boat stuff goes wrong all the time. But, uh, I mean, when we got it, our assumption was kind of that, you know, we were going to sp- take the rest of the summer and learn it, mm-hmm. learn the boat, that kind of stuff. Said you just put it right week, on the water. And then next year, really just get, you know, get comfortable this year and next year, just do it. So cool. Cool stuff. Uh, we're going to get into the news now. Like I said, it's brief. We'll start with what is releasing in August. It is August. Second at time of recording. Um, so let's jump into it. August 4th, we have Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout for PS4 and PC. Don't buy it because that's one of the free games with PlayStation Plus, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about. Uh, August 7th, we have Fast and Furious Crossroads, which I plan to play. It looks so bad. PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It sure does. Um, on the same day, we have uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for the PC. On August 11th, <coughs> we have Risk of Rain 2 for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. August 13th, we have a Total War Saga, Troy, for PC. August 14th, EA Sports 4 for PS4, Xbox One. Uh, August 18th, we have Microsoft Flight Simulator for PC. Now, I'm jazzed up about this, not because I'm going to play it, but it's coming to console eventually. Mm -hmm. So this puts us one step closer to uh, me learning to actually fly planes on my Xbox. Mm. And I'll tell you, if they sell an instrument panel for it, I'm probably going to go all in, full nerd, on this flight simulator. Just want to warn everybody. If I was playing uh, farming simulator on PC, I would definitely have the fucking cockpit for okay. the farming simulator. So, uh, we're August twentieth. Battle Toads for Xbox One and PC. On the twenty first, we have PGA Tour Two K Twenty One for PS Four, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, as well as Samurai Jack Battle Through Time for the same systems. On the twenty seventh, we have Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition for the PS Four and Switch. We also have Tell Me Why Chapter 1 for Xbox One and PC. Is that the uh, Don't Nod game? Mm-hmm. Tell Me Why. I didn't uh, realize it wasn't coming to... Well, I guess I did realize that Microsoft had the first shot on that. I'd forgotten that. On... Where are we at here? August 28th. August 28th. Captain Subasa. Rise of Champions, that's probably not how you say that. Uh, PS4, Switch, and PC, as well as Madden 21, which I know you're excited about. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Xbox One, uh, PC, and PS4. Project Cars 3, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And Wasteland 3, PS4, Xbox One, and PC, all on the same date. Sometime in August, we will also get Serious Sam 4 for PC. Now, let me tell you what's concerning about Fast and the Furious, besides the obvious. Besides the fact that you've seen it. Um, Slightly Mad Studios is making it, who also makes Project Horrors. Yes. They have two games coming out in the same month. I don't know where they're 
Uh, I don't think they're big enough for that. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, anything? Just... Do you do you care about anything that I just talked about? Tell me why sounds kind of cool. Okay. Um, obviously, I always like giving the don't nod games a chance anyway. Um, and tell me why it does sound interesting to me. So I'm excited for that one, but I got to wait for it to come with PS4. So, um, man, this, that, this Fast and Furious game looks like shit. It looks, yes, it does. Moving on. Uh, Stadia Pro Games for August. Uh, these are the games that Stadia is offering. They're offering Strange Brigade, Strange Brigade, a co-op action adventure for up to four friends. You explore labyrinths prowled by undead guardians and hideous monsters. Harness traps to turn the tables on your enemies or blast your way to the heart of Sateki's Temple. I'd enjoy that if I had any friends on Stadia to play that with. Yeah, you probably would. Uh, they're also offering Kona, a chilling adventure set in a snowbound Canadian village. Mm-hmm. Something strange is at work at the edge of the world, and it's up to you to solve the mystery and survive. Kona challenges both your wits and nerves. Unravel a web of clues as you search a spooky, abandoned retreat in the midst of a deadly blizzard. Uh, you're probably not in for that. Oh, that game's been around forever, too. It, it has been around forever. Uh, Metro 2033 Redo. Redux. Redo. I believe it's Redo. I think it's Redo. Uh, yes. Face the terrors of post-apocalyptic Moscow tunnels in the story-driven single-player first-person shooter. Make your way through a post-war odyssey that challenges you to think quickly and move quicker to survive. Uh, so it's Metro 2033 are considered to be the best at it, but it's typical FPS stuff. Uh, just shapes and beats. Test your reflexes against the beat-across dynamic levels that move and shift around you. It's a completely unique musical experience. Nothing fits a uh, streaming platform like a game that tests your reflex. Right, right, right. And last up is Rock of Ages 3. The boulder rolling action arrives, launching straight into Stadia Pro. Crush everything that stands in your path, build your own levels, and share them with friends to spread the destruction. Five games for Stadia Pro. They're all available right now. Mm-hmm. So that is an option. Uh, PlayStation Plus games for August. Um, I told you earlier you are going to get Fall Guys. Uh, that will happen on launch day. So the the first or the fourth is when you'll be able to get that. The other game is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two Campaign Remaster, which is available right now. Mm. Those are both available to the end of August. Um, so that's kind of your options there. Fall Guys looks like we could have some fun with it. I'm sure yeah. Call of Duty is great for a lot of people. I won't be partaking yeah. in that. Yeah, fall, fall Guys, I feel like we might have to try if I ever get around to playing with you guys again. Looks fun. Uh, Xbox Games with Gold. Uh, Games with Gold for August 2020. For the Xbox One, we've got Portal Knights from August 1st to the 31st, and Override Mech City Brawl from August 16th to September 15th. Uh, for Xbox... Wait for the. That must be for the. It's their 360. I don't know why the article doesn't say it, but everything is okay. also crossplay for the one. Yeah, so. yeah. MX Unleashed from August 1st to August 15th, and Red Faction 2 from August 16th to the 31st. Um, so, a bunch of crap there, more or less. Mm hmm. I'm not excited about really anything on every, any list except for maybe Fall Guys, and that's only if we ever play it. Right. Um, I'll play with some of the Stadia stuff because that's what I do with Stadia. Um, but, but nothing yeah. you're into. Mm-mm. Not really. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that. Uh, here, here's the two half stories that I told you we would do. Uh, this this one I think is neat, and it's something that I never thought about because I don't have that issue. Uh huh. But apparently, in Sea of Thieves, a, a, a large number of people have a phobia of being underwater, um, and not just for shark purposes, just the idea of being like in the depths of the ocean. It's overwhelming, mm. whatever. People just have water phobias. So Rare actually added an auto float feature. So what happens is if for some reason your boat gets hit by a cannonball or you're a dumbass and jump off a cliff into the water, you automatically just bob to the surface. You don't go underwater. Nice. That is actually a, uh, you can actually turn that on and off. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a feature that they <coughs> added to help people that have underwater phobias. And they did. What's funny is they did something similar. Uh, that game Grounded just came out recently. Yep. Uh, and apparently there's an arachnophobia 
toggle on there. That's what I heard. And instead of it being, you know, spiders, because you're in this game, you're shrunk. Now it's basically like, honey, I shrunk the kids of the game. Um, the spiders are huge and there's people that are deathly afraid of spiders. So basically the spiders are just like this white blob with eyes. If you turn that mode on and your boy would turn that mode on. You would just so you know, <laughs> you don't like the giant spiders. I don't like small spiders. I especially oh, don't like giant spiders. Now that grounded game, super interested to me. I uh, read some reviews. I don't know that I'll even be messing with it. Yeah. It's now it's, it's got in, a ton of people bought it and played it. It's in some but, sort of early access thing on, on game pass. I don't think it's like done done, but you know, I'm seeing it get like sixes and stuff out there. So some of the things I read about don't sound like fun. First off, I think you need people to play with. Yeah, I think it's more more fun with a group. Yeah, so that's uh, but yeah. Sea of Thieves still updating, still doing its thing. It's got a real uh, a less dramatic version of um, No Man's Sky, where that game has just continued to evolve into some, evolve into something totally different than what it was when it launched. But it wasn't bad mm-hmm. when it launched uh, the right. way that No Man's Sky was, which I super enjoy. The last story that also really doesn't matter. Uh, PlayStation, Sony is going to brand their Bravia TVs as ready for PlayStation 5. Um, which, yeah. Which, uh, there are I two wanna... models. Go ahead. Go, you go ahead first. Okay. There, there are two models that are going to be specifically as marked ready for PlayStation 5 on the box. The Bravia Z90H and the Z8H, which will be the first in the Bravia series to bear this label, uh, Assuring you that your Sony gaming console will make the full use of its special features. What exactly are those features? Uh, many of those come standard HDMI 2.1, a new format for your HDMI cables that lets you deliver much more information over the compatible ports. This allows 120 frames per second at full 4K resolution, which isn't possible through the same HDMI cables that you are using on your current console. It also enables a low latency mode, which both the PS5 will be able to automatically activate on a compatible display with HDMI 2.1. Both of these new Bravia sets include it, letting you play your games at the lowest latency possible without having to mess with any settings in the menu first. The Z90H will be limited to 4K um, and sadly does not feature a 120 hertz panel for you to make use of that. The more expensive Z8H kicks things up at 8K for native resolution, but also features 120 hertz support at 4K, perfect for PS5, which will support both. So, Dan, are you going to go buy a brand new TV because it says on the box it works with your PlayStation? No. Okay. Um, and here's the thing. Um, with the exception of a few minor, you know, these few minor technical details, a lot of the Bravias already do this with Sony products. I just love... <laughs> I love that they are, they're doing this. It's so, like, gross and markety. That I super love it. I love that someone's going to go to the store and be like, well, this is the TV I have to have for my PlayStation. Right. Because it says Play- ready for PlayStation on it. I, I love uh, it. It's not necessary. It's it's gross. It's really markety. Um, like you said, it's it's unnecessary. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 super into it. Um, I'm not going to buy one. I have an LG yeah. TV. I like it. It's no, 4K like I have, with my, If I were to plug my PS4 into my Sony TV downstairs, that also has my Sony soundbar hooked up to it. I, they all they they all work in tandem together, just pretty much like this. They do, but it's not ready for PS5. But it's not ready for PS5. Uh, I have a PS4 here that I have my Sony Bravia TV up here that, and they all it, they already kind of work do this stuff more or less. Now, I'll tell you, if I just turn on something and my LG TV is off, it will turn on. on. Right. Um, Same thing for my Samsung in the bedroom. If I put my Switch in the dock, the TV will turn on. Yeah, that's what mine Um, does. So See, what the Sony does is, depending on which one I turn on, the TV turns on to that um, HDMI. I think what they're pushing here is, hey, you're going to have the best experience here. I guess. Which may be best for PlayStation. You know, something like that. But like PS5 ready sounds like I've got to have that TV. And I just it love does. how silly this is. It's probably only going to ever be on two boxes. Um, yeah, these two. Yeah. <laughs> but hell, there it is right there on their site. Ready for PlayStation 5. Yeah. 
Which one are you? Is that the the top the Z eight H? The eight K. There is a cheaper one that's like nine. That's like eight hundred or nine hundred dollars. So that's smaller thing is TV. Six thousand dollars for a seventy inch for the Z eight H. Yeah, and it's and it's nine thousand for the eighty five inch. My God. I think I paid four hundred dollars for my TV, and it's great. I paid six for mine, and I love it. Yeah. Hey, if you got the money, fuck it. Get that ready for PS5 TV. I paid, yeah, right. Yeah, I paid six for my TV, and then I got the soundbar open box like $100 off. So. Hell yeah, open box my soundbar too. <laughs> my LG soundbar open box from Best Buy, $100 off. Yeah, mine are both Sony's, so I knew I wanted the TV, but the soundbar was an added bonus. What's that smallest size that TV comes in, Gerald? Oh, the, the expensive one only comes in those two sizes? Well, I don't want this other one. I don't want the weaker one. You know, now that I've seen the, the, the daddy of TVs. The Z8H? Yeah, my boy Z8H here. I can't step down to the Z90 whatever it oh, was. Oh, I forgot. My 4K player is Sony, too. I got that open box as well. You're bought into the whole brand, the whole ecosystem. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how I like to do it. Those TV makes sense for you, then. <laughs> nope. Just for reference, that TV costs more than Dan's boat. Yeah. <laughs> that TV's so expensive. That TV is so incredibly expensive. It costs more than my boat. Yeah. Given the choice between a boat or a TV, the boat would have been cheaper. Yeah. Insane. Insane. That's it. That's the news. That's all of it. That's um, everything. There's other news out there if you want to talk about Fortnite or the Lego NES more or uh, Animal Crossing update number two, which adds fireworks and dreams and trippy dream sequences. But there's just really nothing there. Now, quick update. Producer Gerald, are you still playing Animal Crossing? Good, good. Still playing it. I'm also still playing it. Now, I will say my routine's changed a little bit. I don't spend as much time with it, but I do still play it. Um, Gerald's got the loan paid off. Big moment. I Are still you, stand by the fact that I need to get back into it, but you're, you're never going to get back into it. You're playing Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. You'll never play it again. I might. You never know. I almost did the other night, and then I didn't. <laughs> Shout out to friends of the show, Zach Wimbush and Thomas Barfield, for uh, supporting us over at Patreon, it's ten dollars tier or higher. Also heard from Garrett this week. He mm. messaged me on PlayStation, so I messaged him back. Good to hear from Garrett. Long time friend of the show, Garrett. So yeah, that's kind of oh, that's where we are. It's where we are. That's where it's we where are. We life. stand. We're farming. You're a samurai. I am a samurai. I'm a farmer. Gerald's got the video of that guy in Florida strapped to the hood. Yeah. Of the semi semi truck. Yeah. It's a weird world we live in right now. Yes, it is. Um. I don't know what I'm going to play next when I'm not playing multiplayer stuff. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about it. I don't know what I'm going to play next, but I think yeah, it needs you have to, to give it a think. You have to think about it. I do have to give it a think. Um, I haven't played VR this year, which is concerning. So maybe I'll make it a VR experience. There you go. That's all I have. you have anything you want to share with anybody before I tell you about our social media names that we don't use? Tell us about the names if you don't use. I got nothing to share. Uh, at game underscore stitch on Twitter. We don't use that. Uh, Gerald uses a little bit, but we mostly don't use it. Um, I am at podcast Ryan, which I totally don't use on Twitter. Dan is at Shirtless Dan, which he mostly doesn't use. Uh, Gerald is at Hoffman Show, which he sometimes uses. You think that's fair? Does all that seem fair? I probably use my t- own Twitter more than you think. Well, I wouldn't know because I don't use mine at all. I don't always put my stuff out there, but I like do likes and scroll through it and all that stuff. I don't. Gerald's on the he creeps. Yeah, it could be like that. I do. I I'm on there every day, but I don't always post anything. Does I have an iPhone and it tells you how much you use your phone each week and what you use it doing? Does Samsung do that? No. Oh, I was wondering how much you use your phone. I don't think I uh, a lot. So I got my. It always hits when we do the show. Is why I'm reminded of it. Uh, huh. 
I used 15% less last week for an average of one hour and 57 minutes per day. So two hours of my day, I, I am on my phone. Wow. In some capacity. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Samsung has anything. Is that an email you get or something? It's a, like a push notification. Oh. And then oh. if I click on it, I can actually give you like a more detailed rundown of, of where my time is spent. Hmm. Look at that. I don't think I have that. Uh... So it might s- surprise oh, you that, that What's this here? 25 minutes of my time was spent on Safari. Um, and then it goes down from there. My first used after pickup, so like I, I grab my phone and I unlock it. Most of the time it is messages or Safari, then podcast and email is the first thing I go to. Hmm. So yeah, that's it that's uh I was just wondering if you use your phone a lot. I don't know. Well, see, I have a bad habit. I don't ever close out of things. I'm assuming, but they're still running. That counts as being on. Um, only if your phone is unlocked. So, yes, if you leave your phone laying around unlocked. But my phone goes to sleep, like, super quick, so. Uh, see, mine does, and I set mine for the max because I hate having to open it back up, so. I'm just using my face, so. I'll tell you what, the, these phones need a face mask option where I can click a button and it still unlocks. I'm getting well acquainted with my passwords again because it won't unlock when I have a face mask on. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that is the show. Uh, That's it. Follow Dan so we can creep on your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Same thing for Gerald. I'm not going to creep on your stuff. And uh, that's it. That's all we have. I, uh, I'll be feeding America on Farming Simulator. I'll let you guys know next week what I decided on the single player stuff. Dan's going to be a samurai next week. I will be. Gerald will still be playing Fallout 76. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> uh, we'll see crossing. you next week. Uh, same time, same place. Good night. Good night.